As a new recruit or as a new firefighter, you're very single, short-sighted, thinking, wow, that would just be hard to climb that tower carrying these bottles. But now in this position, through all my experiences in the years, I can start to see the impact of something like that, not only across, like I said, the entire United States, but just as the organization as a whole there, and probably even the automatic aid organizations and all the other support staff that came from all over the United States, just looking at the magnitude of coordinating that response and that cleanup effort and the rebuilding process over all those years. I remember pre 9-11 uh, we did some training, our very first training on terrorist attack, our very first one. Uh, many of our members thought this would something that could never happen here, right? This was like a far-fetched kind of event um, because it was the first time ever given. I mean, we did the training and they went through the training, but it was like, is this really something we are gonna be using? And it changed everything. I mean, the, everything from security at the airport to how we managed calls to the, some, a lot of the training that we had afterwards to prepare for this type of events. Um, it, it changed the fire service, there's no doubt that um, we as a nation changed, but the fire service changed as well. Between the fire department um, being assisted a lot with the military, we got a whole other level of training that we still implement on this crew today and uh, have the potential to be able to use if there were another disaster of that time. They realize that you know communications can be difficult in these high pressure times when you bring multiple organizations together. So it took many, many years afterwards of implementation, training, obtaining um, funding to roll these new programs out to the department so they can better communicate should an incident like this happen again. If we're continuing improving our mental health standards, um, helping people with their mental health, recognizing the fact that we have mental health problems because of what we see and what we have to be deal with and on scenes. We added our heavy rescues, which we have one of them over here, Squad 219. Uh, we've got Squad 204 as well. And those are designed to respond to that type of incident. And so it uh, really ramped up the training for mass casualty type incidents. I mean, it shaped us. I, I mean, not just as a fire service, but as a, as a society. I mean, we're different. I met people who were there. I, I've since then met uh, chief officers that were working on the pile uh, from FDNY. And I think that uh, it brings it more personal then because you know people and you know people who lost people. And you know some of the folks we met, they lost their best friends in the, in the incident. So it makes it very, very personal. And it makes me know that it, this can happen anywhere in that working together, especially in the fire service, uh, we are there for each other, whether you live in New York, whether you live in the city of Mesa. Uh, we have connections everywhere across the country and that just being there for one another when these events happen is what's so important because it just makes us better as a fire service across the nation, uh, being prepared for whatever comes our way.